Welcome, friends, to Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter. We bring you the greatest female voices in the music industry. From the artists, songwriters, and producers, to managers and executives, and all the women who make the music industry what it is today. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, friends, to another episode of Crazy Women Country. I'm Donna, and today I'm here with Miss Taylor Marie Wagner. How are you doing? Hi, good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. So you're staying uh, dry and uh, warm in Tennessee, right? Yeah, I'm trying to stay dry. You know, hey, it's just, it's, it's a Tuesday. It feels more like one of those lazy Mondays, just kind of dreary day, so trying to enjoy it and apparently my dogs are wanting to say hi to everybody I don't know if y'all can hear them barking in the background I'll apologize in advance <laughs> they are welcome anytime yes definitely I, I have six little barky ones sometimes but they're usually quiet sometimes like during the interviews every once in a while someone comes to the door that's it all hell breaks loose we have we have two we have Finch and Shy. Finch is currently going nuts to try and come say hello apparently <laughs> Oh, that's great. I love it. Oh, so we'd like to start off with the most difficult question of all. Who is Taylor Marie Wagner? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I am a country music singer songwriter and I'm, let's see, a cowgirl. I grew up doing 4-H, FFA. I showed livestock. I was a barrel racer. So I love rodeos. Still love to sing at rodeos. Have a good old time with that. And I just, I guess as my bio says, I love sweet tea, a little bit of sassy sparkles and just having a good time. I love that. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. So now I know I was listening earlier do some of your songs and your latest release visiting hours i would love to know the story behind that song so i was dating a guy and he got in a tragic accident um boat and he out on the water and he died in the accident and i had that song i had the hook um i sure wish i had superpowers if i did have one have visiting hours well i'd started writing the song and so like different parts of that song I would love to go fishing with my grandpa again um he's passed away my horse um my first horse has since died and different and my first dog like it's all different things that had happened well I had that little bit written and I had the hook and I sat down with my friend Savannah and my friend Marcus and we got to talking and somehow the song came up because I was going through hooks and the funny thing if anyone listening, when you go to sit down for a write, a lot of times you'll just throw out ideas and everything. Well, Savannah and I have written quite a few songs together and her being the friend that she is, she comes peering over, looking at my list and she goes, well, you didn't say that idea out loud. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I really want to write that. And because it was one of those, it was like a hard, you know, it was a hard song for me to want to write. I was like, ah, she was like, no, I think we should write it. She goes, we're going to write this. You, you can do it. And she's like, if I have to grab the tissues, we can, but we're going to write this. And so we did. And I'm glad she pulled it out of me to finish because I had had that song had been sitting around for more than a year or so. And I hadn't touched it. And for all intensive purposes, if she hadn't have told me, like, let's write it, I probably wouldn't have. And I'm like I said, I'm so glad she did. But that's where that song came from. And I thought, like, I wanted a song for people if they were missing someone or even if they're missing a pet like I said I put my horse and my dog and everything in it just to have a song to listen to and kind of just reflect because every I mean I wish heaven had visiting hours I'd be visiting a lot of people at this point and so that I I just I felt really strongly and wanted to share it um it is still hard for me to sing sometimes I uh, can't get through it without a few little tears but it's a, one of my favorite songs it's a beautiful song I and I might be extra hooked on it right now because I just lost a good friend and you know that whole visiting hours of heaven it's like yeah that'd be perfect that would be absolutely perfect right now well, I'm so sorry to hear about your friend. Mm -hmm. song. Well, thank you so anyway let's let's uh go, go from there and talk about 
what is going on now with you? Like, um, as far as you have some projects coming up? Yeah, we're working on all new music. Um, and I'm really excited about it. I'm finally getting to show people my rodeo roots and I'm releasing an album and we're just going basically all wild west with it and having a good old time. And I am really excited. You know, I've released other music and I, I love everything that I've done, but I finally feel like I'm where I want to be as an artist. And now I'm working on the music that I feel like actually is going to give my fans a chance to get to really know me. And I'm excited about that. Um, right now we're working on a song that's actually called Country Song. And it's just kind of, this one's goofy. Like the first line is finger licking fried chicken. So <laughs> I love it. Little country things. It was funny. We write that. And my co-writers, David and Kristen, they said something got said about they were like well what makes up every country song and we were joking around and I was like well there's the song we're writing and, and everybody was like what I was like we're gonna write a song about everything that you put into a country song yeah so I sit on the front porch gotta have her sweet tea we're having fried chicken like and it was just all these little <laughs> things and I was like this is cute so we went with that and that's what we're currently working on and then we have a couple other songs about rodeos and I just got back I um played the national finals rodeo I performed out there back in December and it was my first time going out uh, to Nevada and seeing the desert we, my husband and I drove into Arizona and got to see the painted desert and everything well I'd never seen a tumbleweed and I was very fascinated with this That's so cool. and wrote a, the next song for the album and it's called tumbleweed because I wanted to relate the tumbleweed to a cowboy which is kind of an interesting perspective but I was like oh this is perfect and so we did that and we're also working on a few more um I have a Christmas song we're working on called Cowboy for Christmas so everything's related like I said rodeo just wild west anything you can think of if it relates to a horse I love it and so <laughs> super excited about it oh, wonderful so tell us who are some of the women that have inspired you to do music oh gosh well as we were talking earlier, I love Sunny Sweeney. Um, she inspired me when I, the very first time I went to Nashville, uh, she was the first artist I ever met in Nashville. And I was going to record my very first song as a young girl. And she just, the advice she gave me and the inspiration, um, it, it doesn't get any better. She's a sweetheart. And I'm just really thankful for people like her because she, like I said, she just took me kind of under her wing right there. And she's like, well, you've got this. And she started giving me great advice. And I was really thankful for that. And then I'm also a big Shania Twain fan. Love Shania Twain. She is one of my absolute favorites. Um, I like her because she's sassy, but she's also like, she's so beautiful. And she does it with so much grace. And she's just like, yep, I'm going to own this stage. And she's got her whole just everything going on and I also love that she does cross into that pop country genre and now what I'm currently working on is more on the country side of things I if you listen to some of my other music I put pop into their music as well and as a writer I've had cuts in pop and rock music so I like just all genres of music and I like that she was someone who liked to blend all that together and my other favorite is Dolly what a shock. I, Dolly doesn't, get doesn't love better. Dolly. I can't relate to anyone who doesn't love Dolly. It, it, it's hard for me, you know? Yeah, she's awesome. Um, Dolly has been an inspiration to me. And again, the same kind of thing with, uh, what was <laughs> the same kind of thing with Dolly with, as with Shania, she blends all the music together and how they do that. And my current, like, favorite I, I'm a big Casey Musgraves fan as well so those are probably like my top four which okay you got your two Texas girls and then in my you know my 90s and Dolly it, it, that's so that's my kind of thing I I love the Texas country scene now Casey's also been kind of doing some more pop stuff here lately but her song uh, Dime Store Cowgirl is probably and Biscuits I love Biscuits um her song biscuits and uh, those are two of my favorite songs of all time I absolutely love them and I just think it's kind of cool how she takes a saying like mind your own biscuits will be gravy yeah. and just 
I'm like, why didn't I think of that? That's great. So I think that's a golden hour and, and um, pageant material are two of the best albums ever. Like that's just me saying that. Totally. Yeah. Cause I mean, songs like good old boys club. I'm like, yeah, how could you, thanks for calling it out. We needed that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those are some great artists. But you make a great point that even now, though, I think most of country does cross over and not all of it, but a majority of it will be crossing, like crosses over. You can see that on the pop charts or wherever. And it's great to see that, you know, like like you mentioned, Shania and Faith Hill and then the women that really crossed over back in the 90s really paved the way for more of that inclusion to not just be one way or the other, but to basically just good music. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And it's so we are able to cross over that element and it often it presented more opportunities for the ladies they they paved the way like you said they give us more more of an opportunity absolutely so are you ready for some fun crazy 20 questions let's go for it okay no right <laughs> or wrong answers mostly so <laughs> right oh what was the last thing you read i read the rescue by nicholas sparks Hypothetically, if I came to you and said I need to hide a dead body, do you know a good place? <laughs> I might. <laughs> well, don't tell me. I don't want anyone knowing. <laughs> oh, what's the top two concerts you've ever been to? Ooh, top two. George Strait. And let's see. Probably. Florida Georgia Line and the Backstreet Boys together. That was pretty awesome. See, there we go. Crossovers, I'm telling you. Yeah, it was. I was there for the CMT Crossroads taping and the two together, they were awesome. Backstreet Boys harmonies and they could still move, guys, in case you're yeah. wondering. <laughs> Back and not miss those dance moves. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. What's the first thing you would do if you won the lottery? Wow. Well, I would probably take and pay off my house, but also I would want, so I've always wanted to do a um, equine therapy uh, charity center. So I'd probably, I was a kinesiology major in college. And so I worked with uh, occupational therapists and physical therapists, and I'm a kinesiologist myself, although now I do music, but I would love to be able to take that passion and provide therapy horses for kids there with special needs or disabilities. And so that would give me the money to do it because unfortunately I don't have the money to do that right now, but I've always wanted to. Wonderful. That's a beautiful thing to do. Tell us something on your bucket list. Bucket list. Oh boy. Play the Grand Ole Opry or the Run. Oh, Beautiful. I just want, just invite me when you're doing either of those. I just want to come see you. Done. Okay. Pause. Yep. yep. Oh, what job would you be terrible at? Ooh, terrible at. Gosh. Um. <laughs> I don't know. Um. I, oh, I do know a cook. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's definite. People are like, oh, wow, like we had friends come over and we had dinner ready. Some of my co-writers and all, and they're like, wow, Taylor, you can cook. This looks amazing. And I'm like, yep. Then you can thank Chris for that. Here's your dinner. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? I was like, I don't cook. I was like, if I'm cooking, you're getting spaghetti because I can boil water and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing wrong with that. And we can call for delivery, right? That's right. Time <laughs> go to. <laughs> oh, what is your game plan for zombie apocalypse? Uh, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Get in a rocket ship and go to space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. No, I like that. That was, a, that was definitely a different one. Uh, what albums or artists should we listen to before we die? Ooh, anything George Strait. Anything Loretta Lynn, Dolly Parton. Pageant material, Golden Hour, Casey Musgraves. Um, gosh, pretty much 
for me, it would, I would have to go with the anything George Strait. I own, I think, almost all of his albums. Um, I grew up listening to him since I was uh, born, basically. So my uh, George Strait CD, and I, he had an older truck. Now he's since gotten, but when I was younger, it was this little hunting truck that he had, and the CD was stuck. So if you wanted to listen to music, you had to listen to George Strait. So Thank goodness it was Amarillo by Morden and just some really good music, but one of my favorites. Oh, that's awesome. I like that. That's the best truck to own. <laughs> George yeah. straight stuck in there. Yep. <laughs> oh, I have a about it. So about this that cassette tape. So oh. so this is a very serious question. Where's Waldo? Yeah. Walmart. Walmart. I think everyone's at Walmart, so yeah, I could I could see Waldo there. I think I know the answer to this next question. Would you rather cook or order in? No, order in Chinese or uh, which one? Just take your pick. <laughs> oh, do you think in the shower? Yes. <laughs> Boots or heels? Boots. What's the best thing since sliced bread? Ooh, sweet tea. <laughs> Ooh. Do you have guilty pleasure music? And if so, what is it? I guess we're straight once again, just <laughs> not really. I don't know. <laughs> oh. What's the worst topping on pizza? Ooh, anchovies or olives no olives make that happen don't worry <laughs> if you could be any person or any position like a ceo or an accountant or doctor or whatever who would you want to be and why who that's okay this is good, probably going to be a totally different kind of answer i would like to be the head of saint jude hmm. and work in the lab there and work on the cure for cancer. So um, that being said, when I was finishing up my degree to become a kinesiologist and stuff, that was something I did a rotation working with kids with uh, cancer. And so my concentration was in pediatrics. And so having to see that and those kids going through that, it made me I'd already gotten my degree and stuff. But then I was like, wow, like, I wish there was something I could do to change this for these kids. And so if I could put myself in that position and be able to just change that and take that away, I would absolutely love to. Beautiful. Are you good at keeping secrets? Yes. My friend tells me I'm a deep freeze. Wonderful, but I'm not telling you any on here because it's recorded. So. Well, that's <laughs> <laughs> well, at what age did you become an adult? I don't think I have yet. I'm still working on that growing up part <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that you never have to grow up you do have to grow old because that whole aging process but never have to grow up I'm pretty sure my latest TikTok video says how much of a kid I am as I'm around granted it's old I took it when it had snowed but I'm parading around singing do you want to build a snowman of course my husband goes no like it's like to be funny but he was like oh my gosh you're like act like you're seven still and I'm like leave me alone <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Tell them to get used to it now. <laughs> Just teasing. If you could win an Olympic medal for any sport, real or fake, what would it be? Ah, easy. Dressage, equestrian. Perfect. I'm on the bucket list for years. Definitely wanted to do it, so. That's neat. Oh, that is wonderful. So what do you have coming up for the rest of this year? have some big plans coming up. Um, obviously, we were talking earlier about your uh, co-writing and releasing new music. Anything that has to do with the rodeo? But any uh, upcoming tours? Yeah, we're getting ready. I was working on more bookings today. I'll be in Limestone, Tennessee, I think, times this year. New Smyrna Beach, Florida um, for a songwriters festival. Then I will be, we're heading out west, Colorado, Wyoming and stuff. Um, we'll be in Missouri. We're going back to Virginia, North Carolina, 
And so we're kind of putting together the tour right now, but definitely rodeos. I'm super excited. And I can't wait to see everybody out on the road. I'm ex so excited. Like right now, I actually looked at my husband and the way things are shaping up, we're going to be on the road and busy. I have shows booked through the first part of December. And I was like, this is nuts, but so cool because we haven't, I've played shows, but it hasn't been what it was in the past. Um, and so now it's like things are finally kind of coming back together. And I'm so happy because I, I'm a people person and I love just getting to interact and see people. And it's been, Zoom has been fun, but I miss getting to actually interact with crowds and sing and perform. And so I'm so excited to get back out there and be doing that. The crowds have missed it, I'm sure. Cause yeah, I know I've missed getting out and listening to live music and definitely. That's my favorite part. I love entertaining people. And I feel like doing that through the phone I mean, granted, my husband and I, my husband's a songwriter. And so we wrote a song like about quarantine and like we did like little quarantines and we had different artists come on and we did like little writers rounds for a little bit there when the pandemic first hit. But he like teased me. He was like, what are we turning into our own like little Zoom comedy show? I was like, <laughs> I wish. And then, so like, we, we, but I told him, I was like, I really miss being able to just entertain people live. That's one of my favorite things um to get to do because it's just fun I enjoy getting to interact and have fun with people I told him I was like I'll never forget like I actually miss having beach balls going everywhere and just having fun with people <laughs> oh definitely definitely so I'm glad that everyone's getting back out and you have quite a busy tour hopefully I'll get to see you uh sometime this year on tour I, I that. how far are you from New Smyrna Beach uh, I am on the opposite side I am uh near Sarasota Okay. Yeah. So, I know yeah. Where that is. yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. That's where I call home. So yeah, I, I try to get out. If I know when in May, maybe we can come over and visit and check you out and oh, get to me. do a live interview even. Yeah. I would love that. There's going to be a lot of folks from Nashville there. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure getting to talk to you and getting to know you. Yes, I've absolutely enjoyed it. And I heard when we first started, you said you write, so we need to set that up. Absolutely. We will most definitely do that. Preferably after the whole concert thing, because uh, I've been consuming my, for those of you who haven't been paying attention, we did this big concert that will be, um, this will be airing after the concert. So right now we're still in prep for the concert and it's crazy. That's all I'm going to say. Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh, thank you again for joining me. And thank you all for joining us for another episode of Crazy Women Country. Have a great day, everyone. If you enjoyed today's episode of Crazy Women Country, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Be sure to click the subscribe button for new interviews weekly. And thank you, friends, for joining us today on Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter.